Hi, everyone. I'm Dara Bunjan. I'm the food enthusiast, writer, PR maven, food stylist, and frustrated baker. Uh, welcome to today's show. We will be talking the thrill of the grill with the five-time James Beard award-winning author of over 30 cookbooks, novelist, PBS host, and writer of Barbecue USA, Primal Grill, Project Smoke, Project Fire, and the list of accolades go on and on. It would take up the whole show. So hello, Stephen. Well, we'll wait. Here he is. Here he is. Hi. Hi, Hi Dara. How are you? I'm fine. What are you grilling and chilling in Florida? Well, uh, we are grilling without any food on the, uh, on the table. It's 95 degrees here today. So uh, our summer has arrived. But I think like everybody during the COVID lockdown, uh, we've been cooking up a storm, grilling more than ever. Uh, and it's been everything from Florida lobster tails while they were in season, uh, hog snapper, uh, you name it, we've been grilling. Well, I, I know that your Facebook page and your Twitter that daily, you're sort of posting different things that you're grilling. Like recently you grilled tomatoes to do like a smoky gazpacho. That's right. We smoked tomatoes, actually smoke roasted on the grill and made a, a smoky salsa brava, you know, that uh, the Spanish spicy Spanish tomato sauce. Well, uh, I want to tell people a little bit more about you. Um, and I want to get to the root of this. Now, you have your Bachelor of Arts in French Literature. Correct. You studied, you studied medieval cooking in Europe. Interesting choice. Fulbright Scholarship to study comparative literature. Yep. Where did the road turn towards cookbooks and grilling and world barbecue? Well, you know... Uh... I wrote my thesis on a medieval French poet named Christine de Pizan, who turned out to be Europe's first feminist, although that message was lostly, uh, largely lost on a clueless 20-year-old. But while I was researching medieval literature, I came across this medieval cookbook. And that gave me the idea to propose uh, a year study uh, uh, with a Thomas J. Watson Foundation uh, fellowship. Uh, on medieval cooking uh, specifically and in the history on the history of cooking in general. And it brought me to France uh, where I was kind of spend my morning uh, mornings uh, working at the Bibliothèque Nationale and other libraries, afternoons at the newly opened La Varenne Cooking School because I wanted to kind of learn the nuts and bolts of cooking as well as just the, uh, the academic uh, side of uh, the history of food. Uh, Evenings, dining around as many restaurants as I could to, uh, you know, to, to kind of understand the French, French food experience. And it really brought me to the intersection of uh, cooking, food, cooking, history and culture. And in a way, I've been doing that ever since. Now, the cookbook uh, writing came from, uh, from my mentor, Anne Willen, the founder of the La Varenne Cooking School. And Anne said, you know, Steve, you'll never make a living writing cookbooks. So <laughs> the gauntlet was thrown down. And uh, I, of course, I decided I was going to make a living writing cookbooks. Uh, it took five under my belt to, uh, to learn the hard way that uh, writing is only a small part of uh, the book process. And you need to, need to uh, have the right idea, be willing to get out and promote it. And, uh, and so with the sixth, and that was my book, Miami Spice, my cookbook career really took off. And uh, I actually started writing cookbooks that made money. Well, I tell you, you had a recipe in Miami Spice that I love, which was a duck breast with a uh, lychee, lychee salsa. salsa. Yeah. That and was it's lychee, so good. It's, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's lychee season right now here in Miami. And the lychees have been just amazing. We bought four or five pounds over the weekend. We've just been gorging ourselves on them. So are you using them any other way on the grill or just nah, eating just, them? Just fresh, just fresh, just fresh. Usually the first couple of weeks we eat them fresh and then by the third or fourth week we start to start to cook with them. Well, it, it is for the sauce a little bit labor intensive to peel and, and take the seed out. I tended 
to off season just get canned leachy nuts and drain them and yeah i was gonna say i wouldn't say that but you know we all do it right you know it's if it isn't in season you try to work around that um what do you find i mean you're you're you do a lot of public appearances and things of that nature you have on facebook people can find steven um, his webpage will lead you to everything, you know, cookbooks, um, streaming videos. So if you want to find anything more, it's stephenreichland.com and it links to everything that he's doing. But you have um, a number of pages on Facebook where people can come in and communicate about barbecuing and grilling. Yeah, and that's it, basically need- the, the, the Stephen Reichland page and it's S-T-E-V-E-N-R-A-I-C-H-L-E-N. Is there a most common question that people ask about grilling? Mm, people are pretty curious of what I'm grilling at the moment. Uh, that's a question we get asked a lot. Um, you know, the sort of nuts and bolts stuff about individual things. Brisket is always a challenge for people. So, uh, you know, we deal with that. But, you know, on my Facebook page, um, I've really tried to make it about, you, you know, I'm, I'm sort of live, breathe, eat and sleep barbecuing and grilling pretty much 24 seven. And so uh, I try, I've tried to make my Facebook page kind of what about, about what I'm thinking of, uh, of at the moment. And uh, uh, you know, for example, uh, yesterday we did a post uh, on the uh, honoring the great Kansas city pit master, Arthur Bryant. Uh, we're trying to um, highlight and profile and salute black pit, pit masters uh, you know, in, uh, in support of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, the day before that, I think we did the smoked tomato video. I, I certainly do videos of what I'm smoking and grilling. Uh, might be what I'm, uh, something about a book I'm reading. Uh, it's, you know, Barbecue University's coming up. Uh, so we'll definitely be doing uh, Facebook Lives from Barbecue University, which is a school I run in South Carolina. So um, you've been, you've been doing much... that. You've been doing that barbecue university for a number of years through um, down in Virginia and different yep. places. So this is for Father's Day. Yeah, Father's Day and, weekend. That's right. And this is being held where? Uh, our new home is at. Uh, it's called uh, Montage Palmetto Bluffs. It's in uh, Bluffton, South Carolina. Uh, which you wouldn't have heard of, but uh, it's midway between Savannah, Georgia and uh, Hilton Head. And this is going on for Father's Day and you've made accommodations for the COVID. Why don't you fill people in as to how that's working? Yeah, uh, this this year is uh, certainly different and uh, certainly going to be a a challenge, uh, you know, because the whole spirit of the school is summed up by the words gather around the grill. And gather how do you gather around the grill with social distance well uh, i mean first of all we will practice social distance everywhere the grills will be set up six feet apart our work tables will be set up six feet apart uh very often we get people to come as you know, husband and wife or might be father and sons or might be three friends from college and we will group teams together by who you came with um I'll be wearing a mask when I'm not lecturing. Uh, the staff will be masked. Uh, we'll wear gloves. Our, all of our cookware and work tables will be sanitized. Uh, we u- used to serve off of the buffet line, and now it's, you know everything will be served. So we're going to do everything in our power, actually, to keep that social distancing in place. Is there any space left? Uh, I think there may be a couple of spaces left. And on my website, which is Barbecue Bible, actually, is the easiest way to find out about my barbecue activities. If you go to barbecuebible.com, that's B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E-B-I-B-L-E.com, and click on Barbecue University, you can find out about the school. Um, I have a couple questions from Jeffrey Spear. One, what has been your most remarkable experience along the chef celebrity trail? Hmm. Well, I think other than maybe, meeting me. <laughs> well, other than meeting Dara, of course. Um, you know, I think the uh, most remarkable experiences have not actually been along the celebrity chef trail, but just my travels, <coughs> you 
my travels on what I call Planet Barbecue, uh, and that is traveling around the world to research books like Barbecue Bible and Planet Barbecue, and meeting pitmasters. I mean, I remember once in Bali, Indonesia, I woke at uh, 4 a.m. to accompany a their, their national barbecue or uh, uh, on the island's called Babi Guling, and it's a uh, it's a spit roasted pig uh, stuffed with lemongrass and gallangale and and uh, macroot lime leaves and a spit roasted over a charcoal coconut charcoal fire. So uh, this guy, I, I woke at four o'clock with him to go slaughter the pig. He gave me the knife to plunge it in, uh, and then we. Uh, we actually made a salad of warm pig's blood and coconut, uh, grated freshly grated coconut, which was my breakfast that morning. Uh, okay. You know, I try and I try and be a uh, a hospitable guest as well as a hospitable uh, host. Uh, we made the marinade. We uh, spit roasted the the uh, Bobby Gooling. It was totally amazing. But you know, that's the kind of experience that I will remember the rest of my life. Uh, in terms of celebrity chefs. Uh, uh, you know, I've grilled, cooked and grilled with them all, uh, from Aaron Franklin to uh, Rodney Scott to, you know, you name it. But one that really stands out in my mind is a guy named uh, Vitor uh, Arguinoziz, and he's a Basque chef in the Basque country of Spain. Right. There's a restaurant called Echebari, and he's a self-taught guy, and everything he cooks in that restaurant is grilled. Now, many people do that, but he he was the first, but he takes it so far as to build an individual fire for every piece of fish, everything he cooks. So if you order fish, he's got a big fire pit on one side. He grabs a shovel full of embers, puts them on his grill, which is a super high tech grill. Uh, and then he cooks your fish over that particular mound of embers and your wife's chicken would get cooked on over a separate mound of embers. So it's like the ultimate in customization, uh, and, you know, I mean, he to say he pushes the envelope, we all push the envelope now, but uh, he, he smoked the butter that goes on the grilled bread, you know, and he was, uh, that was where I got the idea for my smoked ice cream. So um, uh, he was pretty, pretty remarkable guy. Was that also the inspiration of putting the steak right on the embers? Well, no, that actually came from a restaurant in Providence, Rhode Island called uh, Al Forno. And they'd been, they were doing that 25 years ago. Uh, but before that, President Dwight D. Eisenhower used to cook a steak like that at the White House when he would do cookouts at the, at the White House. Uh, before that, you know, I'm very fascinated by uh, the invention of grilling by our prehistoric ancestors, one in particular called Homo erectus. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have been caveman, uh, grilling steaks caveman style, you know, for at least uh, uh, a million, a million eight hundred thousand years. You know, um, there's a quote I found of yours that I think sort of sums up your rules. You said, Racklin's rules, if it tastes good baked, fried, sauteed, or boiled, it tastes even better grilled. Barbecue has no limits, but it does have conventions. Wow. Well, that was very articulate. I must well, have, uh, I, 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 stumble, uh, I stumble on uh, good phrases every once in a while. Right. Um, some of the things that you have uh, done, um, you have coming up a new book on grilling vegetables, spring of 2021, mm -hmm. Project Fire TV show for fall 2021. Is that season three? That's season three. And actually, we will be taping it uh, this fall, and it will air in uh, spring of uh, 2021. That's right. Where are you taping yeah, that it? Was, well, that's a, that's a good question. And one of the uh, locations we're considering is Baltimore. I know, yeah. food stylist. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Well, uh, well, you did one of the uh, you did one of my prime primal grill uh, TV shows. I was sure after that experience, you vowed no TV ever again. <laughs> it's uh, it's very, you know people don't realize how much work goes into a half an hour TV show, but it's typically anywhere from you know four to five hours of me on set. Uh, it's a crew of twenty people uh, working hard, and there's one goal to make a dish seem simple and very easy to do. 
Yeah, well, I, I think I was thrown to the lions because yeah. you your your personal assistant got sick at the very last minute. Yeah. And Margaret Sullivan, may she rest, who may was your rest producer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Maryland Public Broadcasting. She says, Dara, can you go to Tupac, Arizona? I think it was like in two days. I go, I've not done it, but I'll give it a shot. I think no, five you, days. You, you did a great job. And it was, uh, you know, I hope you had fun. It's a lot of work. I always say it's the hardest two weeks of my year, and it's the most fun two weeks of my year. It, it was a great experience, and I would I would go through it again. Mm -hmm. So I'm here for you when you come to Baltimore, and I thought um, you got it. the last time you were in, there was some talk about you going to Hawaii, so I volunteered for that one as well. Okay, that, that's, yeah. a, that's an easy lift. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Baltimore and your background, okay? I'm trying to remember, it was Milford Mill High School? Yeah, it was uh, Bedford Elementary, uh, Sudbrook Junior High, and uh, Milford Mill Senior High. Okay, so what was some of you, where were some of your hangouts when you were in Baltimore? A, oh, boy. A late tea. Okay, so uh, let's see, Mandel's Deli. Uh, it would have been Silver's Bakery. Not that I hung out there, but that's where our chocolate top cookies and uh, rainbow cake came from. Uh, it would have been Obrickies for crab. It would have been Hausner's for special occasions and also Tio Pepe for special occasions. Suburban uh, house. Suburban house, of course, uh, would have been, my dad was an executive for Reed's, uh, Reed's drugstores. If anybody remembers Reed's, run right to Reed's. And I right, remember. The one at the plaza. Yeah, they had a, uh, an all you could eat, uh, all you could eat chicken wing deal, uh, and I, I think I broke the bank on that one. Uh, uh, Atman's Deli for corned beef. Uh, yeah, you know, Baltimore had, I, I remember also when the old uh, McCormick's was down on the harbor. And, you know, uh, that, was, that was the sweetest smelling inner harbor that uh, on, on the planet. Well, I go back to the days when I worked for Van Spices and that smell was in my car, it was in my yep. hair. So, um, yeah, you know, that that was very fragrant to smell. Was it more like the turmeric or the curry flavors yep. that you really yep. got? Um, you have some gift suggestions for Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And I have a question for you. I mean, you did a book that says Man Made Meals. Mm -hmm. I, I see more women in barbecue, but it tends to be that man who in the regular home kitchen wouldn't do a thing, but he's, you know, chief of the grill. Why do you think? What what well, What is that background? Well, uh, like my wife says, that's because most women are way too smart to stand downwind of a hot, smoky grill, you know, being buzzed by <laughs> insects, the weather is 100 degrees out, humidity 90%. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're burning your food anyway, because you've had too much to drink. So women are just way too uh, smart for all that. But seriously, um, you know, uh, for, for, I mean, first of all, it's, I think it's very important to say that that's in our culture uh, in North America. But elsewhere in the world, uh, the, the great grill masters are actually grill mistresses. And if you think about Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, uh, Bosnia, uh, uh, Serbia, and even in Mexico, you know, a lot of the great grill mistresses are women, not men. So uh, it's a little bit of a stereotype. Um, why it happens, you know, God likes to set stuff on fire. What can I say? <laughs> um, you know, uh, some of the grill items I saw that you were suggesting for Father's Day, and let me tell people, there are a gazillion grilling books, um, beer can chicken book, sauce books, anything you want to know how to cook. It, there is a book for it on the stephenreichland.com site. But he has suggested 10 or 12 items for you for Father's Day. And one of the things I saw on there that I liked and I used before I sold my grill because I was going to move um, was the rack that you have to hold the ribs vertical. That's vertical, right. We call, horizontal. We, we, 
That's right. We call that no vertical. Actually, you hold them upright. Uh, we call that the rib condominium. And the uh, idea of that is, you know, uh, a Weber kettle grill, which is sort of the go-to grill for so many people, will comfortably hold two racks of spare ribs or baby back ribs. You might be able to get squeezed three baby backs on. Uh, but um, in order to cook four, you know, if you want to serve four to eight people, you got to cook four racks. You stand the ribs on their side, and this rack holds them upright. So, and, and a lot of the tools, you know, on my the, that I've created in the uh, Best of Barbecue line, I like the Best of Barbecue rib rack, uh, or the uh, grill brush, or the Luma tongs, which are grill tongs that have a little flashlight built into one arm so you can see what you're doing at night. It's all stuff that I designed. But basically, when I was grilling, I thought, you know, I could really use an X. I really want a set of tongs with a light so I can see what I'm grilling. I really want a rib rack so I can get, you know, I can get four racks of ribs on uh, on uh, a kettle grill. So a lot of the stuff I just kind of invented because it didn't exist before. Well, I, you have the first, the recipe that I always went to on the ribs was the first timer's ribs. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck on that. They're so it's, good. It's pretty good. And, and yet you probably have... 15 or 20 recipes for ribs. Oh, I wrote a whole book on ribs called Best Ribs Ever, which I think uh, that, that book has at least 50 or 75 recipes just in that book alone. Uh, but, you know, we are expanding the notion of ribs now to include uh, beef ribs, uh, lamb ribs, cross-cut beef ribs, you know. Uh, so pork ribs is just part of the story. Actually, speaking of the story, I'm working on a story on uh, ri on ribs for the New York Times right now. Um, can you give us a hint what it's about? Um, you, you know, a basic crash course on ribs for people who have never done them. I mean, the premise of the book is uh, the, of the story is that you know, if you think about it, in a way, yeah, brisket is uh, noble and mighty, and pork shoulder is comforting. But when you really think about barbecue, you think about ribs. Why? Probably because you eat them with your hands. It's, you know, it's such a primal experience. You gnaw the meat off the bone. And so I, the purpose of the story will be to take the mystique out of, uh, take the mystery and, and, uh, and maybe menace out of grilling ribs and just tell, tell you how to do it easily. I have a question. I saw something in looking over, not that I don't know you well after we've, I've We've spent a lot of time together, Dara. Yeah, I know. Don't tell your wife. Uh, and <laughs> you've, uh, you know, and also for anybody listening, Dara is just, she's such a consummate host. And whenever we would work together, she would always secure the four C's of great Baltimore gastronomy. And what are those? Those are, let's see, those are corned beef, crabs, cotties, and chocolate top cookies. So uh, I remember one time I was doing a fundraiser for, for uh, Maryland Public Television. And uh, Dara came with all four of those foods. That was really nice. Did I do all four? But I, I know that I would I would bring them for you, the cotties. Yeah. We did that. Yeah. yeah. That sticks out in my mind. I'm curious because I didn't see the details on it. Somewhere you have Cam Cambodian grilled eggs on a skewer. Yes. Piqued my interest. I couldn't find any more. I couldn't find it, whatever. How does that work? How do you put... How do you grill an egg unless you hard boil it and then you put the skewer in it? Tell me about that one. Just curious. You know, I wish I could, but that's one of the recipes in the new vegetable grilling book because it's actually vegetables and eggs and cheese and bread, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I've got to embargo the answer on that until uh, okay. until the book comes out. So let's talk again next uh, next spring. Well, well, we'll have you on next spring or maybe I'll be working for you out at MPT. Um, uh, let's see. I always ask the question, uh, what is your most epic culinary fail? <laughs> well, that's a pretty easy one. So, uh, many, many years ago, uh, back when beer can, can chicken was a thing and I was the one that actually brought it from the backwaters of, uh, barbecue to the American mainstream. Uh, I was doing a demonstration of uh, beer can chicken for the Washington Post and NPR. This was a kind of a dual. They had reporters from both entities there. And I was okay. using a grill I had never used before that for some perverse reason 
had the smoker box in the center, not off to one side. So okay. I put the beer can chicken on, the chips were in the smoker box, and I turned my back to do a few other activities. I heard something that didn't sound quite right, lifted up the grill lid, and there was my beer can chicken burning like the burning bush in the Bible, completely engulfed <laughs> in flames. Uh, but happily, I caught it just the moment it caught fire. So I blew the flames out, I uh, readjusted the fire, I uh, strewed some fresh herbs on it, said that's how they do it in Tuscany, and it came out great and delicious and completely edible, but that was a profoundly uh, embarrassing experience. <laughs> and my final question, what question didn't I ask you that I should have? Mm, that's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> let me think about that, boy. Uh... While you're thinking about that, I will tell people, you know, we were talking about, I, I worked as Steven's personal assistant on Primal Grill. And it was a very interesting shoot because we had cows running through the field. Um, <laughs> we had flies that were unbelievable. I had, and we would have to spray the food <laughs> so you could film it. Okay. That's a rare occasion. So have you thought about something? <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, so I, I, if I were you, I might ask, you know, gee, Stephen, after 10 or 12 books and literally hundreds of TV episodes about barbecue uh, series in North America, in, uh, in French and Canada and Italian in Italy, uh, uh, literally thousands of articles and social media posts. Uh, aren't you bored with barbecue yet? Uh, is it still interesting? What do you find interesting about it? And the answer to that is that in a funny way, the story of barbecue is really the story of humanity itself. We've been grilling since we became human. We grill in every culture, uh, in virtually every con uh, country, or in virtually every continent. And I still find it, uh, I still find it fascinating. I still learn something every new, I, I learn something new every day. And I try and learn something every new every day. So at the moment, uh, you know, I'm in it and I plan to stay in it. Well, you're in it to win it. I, I'm going to just go back to International Association of Culinary Professionals had their conference in Baltimore. I think it was 2005, 2004. And they had a grilling competition. I don't know if you remember who your competitors were, but I do. And it was Jose Andreas. It was Jack mm -hmm. Pepin. It mm -hmm. was Bobby Flay. Uh, Cindy Wolf here from Baltimore. And I think Bruce Adele and his wife, uh, Bruce Adele, the Adele Sausages. And there was no doubt who won. Stephen who won? was chosen. Yes, really? he won. Well, uh, yeah, I have completely forgotten that. Do you remember what I made? What I wanted? Um, I have no idea, but Jose's was very fancy. Yeah. Uh, and it was teeming, raining, and the water's coming down the back of the tent. And um, I, I chaired that event. So I was like, I was just hoping that, you know, the, the tent didn't cave in due to the water. I mean, it was. But it was wonderful. And I presented you, I think it was a crystal bowl, one of your many accolades. You know, things. I remember that. And I, I know exactly where that bowl is. It's on a bookshelf up north. So uh, it's on my bookshelf. Wow, what a nice memory. Well, yeah, now I, that you, you brought back a very nice memory. Well, it's now my if I could pleasure. just remember, what I, if I could just remember what I used to trounce the competition with. Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> I wish I could help you. Stephen, this has been fun. I thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I hope everybody will check out everything you want to know, the books for Father's Day. Um, much more. Uh, there you are. Okay, the books for Father's Day. Yep. StephenReichland.com, barbecue, that's B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E, Bible.com. Aaron, anything you want for Father's Day, grilling, uh, uh, we thank you for joining in. Stephen, a big wah, and I hope to see you the next time you're in Baltimore.
could We'd love to. keep grilling and chilling. Okay. Thanks. Great talking to you, Dara. Have a happy Father's Day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for joining in. And uh, we really appreciate you sharing the show. It is up on the Facebook page for Perpetuity. So send it to your friends who like to grill, friends who are looking for a Father's Day gift. Um, it'll be up on uh, jmoreliving.com and the YouTube channel. You can find me at Dara Cooks on um, Instagram and social media. And as always, always may your plates remain full. Uh, and before I forget, you can reach me at the email food at Jaymore Living. Again, may your plates always, always remain full. Have a good week. I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you. <music>